helicopters are some of the most widely used machines in modern history. But are they a large part of our lives today, or could we not have them and live our lives almost exactly the same? Hi, I'm Cameron Cover, And I'm Sydney Pogue. And we believe that the invention of helicopters is a major turning point in history due to its extensive use in multiple fields, such as firefighting, law enforcement, agriculture, warfare, medical transport, and commercial transportation. The original idea for the rotary winged aircraft was made in China with the bamboo helicopter around 400 BCE. Leonardo da Vinci later designed an aerial screw, the first design for a large scale rotary winged aircraft. And we wanted to show you an actual helicopter takeoff, but we can't do that. So, we made our own. Time for liftoff. What happened? Jimmy! Ah! Go fill the gas tank! Yeah, I'm going, Jay! Sorry about that, but while we're waiting, how about a brief history on the development of helicopters? Shortly after the Wright brothers' success in achieved sustained flight, people around the world were trying to create their own flying machine. The first patented rotary winged aircraft was made in Goodland, Kansas by Charles Wilson and William Purvis. Charles Wilson and William Purvis's helicopter design didn't work, and they ended up abandoning the project before the patent was even accepted. This was in 1912. A decade later, two Russian immigrants to the United States, Georges de Bothazat and Ivan Jerome, created the first semi-functional rotary-winged aircraft, or as it was better known, the Flying Octopus, due to its dual quad rotors. Unfortunately, due to large amounts of criticism of the Flying Octopus, mainly due to its instability in air and inability to fly in any directions other than up, down, and forward, the project was abandoned. Fast forward another 13 years to 1935, and two French aviation pioneers, Louis Bourguet and René Dorand, made the first practical helicopter, the Bourguet gyroplane, which used a top-mounted rotor and airplane propeller to achieve stable flight. The Bergray gyroplane also introduced the concept of auto-rotation, that if a rotary-winged aircraft has a power failure, the air pushing up on the rotors would cause them to rotate, creating the rotary equivalent of a glider and giving the pilot some control over the helicopter's descent. However, since the helicopter would have to be falling from a significant height at high speeds for this to work, auto-rotation wasn't a practical safety precaution until later in the development of the helicopter. Another five years later, and Igor Sikorsky, a Russian immigrant to the U.S., created the Sikorsky VS-300, the first helicopter that used a rear-mounted rotor for stabilization. The VS-300 led to the development of the Sikorsky VS-316 in 1942, also known as the XR-4C, the first helicopter in the U.S. Air Force, and also the first helicopter to be deployed internationally. At around the same time the XR-4C was developed, the Bell Company created the Bell 30, the helicopter that introduced the use of a stabilizer bar to keep the rotor system steady during flights, and the first mass-produced helicopter. Then they developed the Bell 47, the first helicopter to be certified for civilian use. The Bell 47 stayed in production for approximately 30 years. After the Bell 47, there are few notable advancements in the functional design of helicopters, but they were beginning to be employed for a variety of uses. Such as search and rescue, firefighting, law enforcement, agriculture, warfare, aerial footage, and commercial transportation. To enhance the performance of these helicopters in different situations, slight modifications were made to match the task. Let's start with search and rescue. It is not known exactly when helicopters began being used for search and rescue purposes due to a helicopter's ability to remain stationary in the air long enough to thoroughly search an area or rescue a stranded person. It is widely used today. The modifications that were added for this purpose include an extendable ladder, searchlight, and even a medical gurney to lift disabled or unconscious pe people. Now let's move on to firefighting. In the late 20th century, helicopters began to be employed for fighting large fires, mainly forest fires or fires that are inaccessible to other firefighting methods. The modifications on firefighting helicopters vary, but the main ones are large buckets or tanks to transport water from distant lakes or rivers to fire a foam cannon filled with foam that has a chemical formula that extinguishes fires, and extra plating to reduce heat in the co cockpit. Guess he's not coming back for a while. 
Let's take a look at the police aspect of helicopters. The Bell 47 was also the first helicopter used by police. The only large modification is a searchlight, similar to that of a search and rescue helicopter. What is it? Jimmy, he said he got stopped by a uh, harvester. Oh, that brings us to our next topic of agriculture. Agriculture is probably the least common use of helicopters due to the availability of other, often less expensive methods of maintaining a field of crops. The only real modification is a crop dusting mechanism attached to the bottom. This helicopter reminds me of the ones that we use in the Air Force. That's really interesting, considering that's the topic that we're going to cover. Let's watch it now. Helicopters began being used in warfare in 1942 with the Sikorsky XR-4C and are still used in warfare today. This is the most complex and diverse group of helicopters of the different types of helicopters, and the modifications follow suit. The modifications can include a nose-mounted machine gun, side-mounted missiles, gun mounts in a, the cockpit, a spotlight for night battles, a ladder to pick up or drop off soldiers during a battle, medical supplies inside the cockpit, and a hook to drop off supplies. Too bad that our friend got called out while we were watching that video. Yeah, but now would be a good time to talk about medical flights. So here's some on air ambulances. It used to be that if you were injured in a place where an ambulance can't get to you, you were completely out of luck. Now, thanks to the helicopter, you can get emergency medical service almost anywhere. Modifications include an enlarged cockpit, medical and emergency surgical supplies, and a secondary power source to power the tools. And it looks like Jimmy is back. Just in time. She's all gassed up and ready to go. Hop in. Okay. Hi. We're here with Cole at Mid-Continent Airport. He's a helicopter pilot. How's it going? Mm -hmm. cool. Um, so what kind of equipment do you use in your helicopters or what kind of helicopters do you use? Is there anything special that you use? Yeah. Unlike normal transportation? Um, well, we do have uh, aviation-specific GPSs inside. Um, obviously, all the uh, gauges and instruments inside are going to be unique to helicopters. Um, I mean, other than that, as far as these helicopters, these these are fairly basic. Um, but the one that we used out in Mexico has about a uh, four and a half million dollar lidar system installed. Has a lidar, uh, laser installed on the bottom of it that takes 3D mapping images and a uh, big screen and computer system in the back. So. Our, we're doing a project on whether or not we feel uh, life today would be the same without helicopters. Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, I would uh, definitely say that helicopters have changed the world for the better uh, since their invention. Uh, I mean, just looking at all of the lives that have been saved from helicopters that people otherwise would have perished when you look at uh, you know the Coast Guard being able to go out and get people see that have uh, boating accidents, um, all of the EMS work that's out there for people that are able to go and get life lighted out of very life-threatening situations in completely inaccessible areas other than by foot. Um, so all of that taken into consideration, I would say that just from a life-saving perspective, the helicopter has had a major positive impact on the world since its institution. Um, other than that, the, uh, the means of transportation that it allows help a lot. The other really big thing is um, with logging, companies that <coughs> utilize helicopters to their best potential with logging um, are actually able to avoid clear-cutting situations. They're able to go in and drop people off by foot with all of their equipment in very, very remote areas and they're able to go in and selectively remove certain trees and actually be able to thin out the forest to a specified uh, degree so that they can help avoid wildland fires and avoid clear-cutting. So as you can see, much of our lives wouldn't be the same without helicopters, due to their extensive involvement in warfare, agriculture, law enforcement, medical transport, transportation, and search and rescue. Many would have died if it not for these machines.